Hi and welcome. This is Penny Santamary and Paula Kraft with Author Marketing Experts. And today we are going to talk about um, Goodreads. And we're this is one of, of three or, or maybe even four videos on how to become a Goodreads power user. Paula, thanks so much for taking the time to walk us through. Oh, my pleasure. I mean, this is a great site. Authors should definitely take advantage of it. You've got about 25 uh, million book lovers that have signed up for a Goodreads account. So take advantage of the audience. Yeah, absolutely. So first, let's talk about how to create a really good profile on Goodreads. Where do you start? You really want to start by asking Goodreads for an account. You want to create a profile. Then you want to search for your book. And you want to check out the author listing so that you can then ask Goodreads to make you official Goodreads author. Once you're a Goodreads author, you can take advantage of all the promotional opportunities that they offer. That's why that's so important. So when you're looking at this profile of Christina George, you can see in the top right it says Goodreads author. Okay. Okay, because yeah, because you can become just a Goodreads user, but becoming a Goodreads author opens up a whole different set of, of tools to you. Is that true? Exactly. It allows you to add video, you can do quizzes, you can post your events. So you can really take your presence on Goodreads to the next level and make it as easy as possible for fans to stay on top of everything that you're doing. Okay. All right, perfect. And then you can incorporate things like video and your blog. And if you scroll down on, on uh, Christina's page, you'll see the videos off on the left. Yep. Okay. So there's already some videos for her books, which is perfect. Also, right above that, you can see the blog feed. So anytime Christina's blog is updated, it will automatically post to Goodreads as well. And that's a great way to kind of keep your site active. And of course, her books are listed as well. So okay. But you can you can really go they go a lot further. Now, at this point, Christina doesn't have any events, but if she did, there is spot there to add events. And even the little things, a lot of authors don't take the time to update their reading lists. But I think they can really see what's going on, and that authors should indicate what books they read for pleasure. They should review other books just like any other Goodreads user. Okay, so the so the good so the so the Christina's books are the books that she actually wrote, and then Christina is currently reading are are the books that she's got on her Kindle or whatever that she just uploaded there. Exactly. Okay. All right. And and either in this segment or in one of the next segments, we'll talk about some of the actions that you need to take on on Goodreads. But one of the things I do want to mention right now is that. Um, the Goodreads mobile app is super handy, and a lot of their traffic, um, oddly enough, comes from mobile. So not everybody is sort of on this site. And one of the things that the mobile app has is you can actually scan books. So if you're wanting to build your bookshelf, um, you can or should scan books that you've already read, even if they're older, because there's no reason that you can't. I mean, all you know, we always want reviews of current books, but. Is there any reason that you can't go back through your bookshelf and just sort of look through books that you've read maybe in the last year? Well, that's not a problem at all. One way to get noticed on Goodreads is by the books that you read. So even as an author, you want to build you want to build a following. And one way people might discover you is through the types of books that you read. I mean, I know from my own account, a lot of the friends I have see that I like to read the same kinds of books. So they want to become friends because they see that we share an interest. And people are interested in learning about other books out there. They're interested in people's opinion. They've read a book. They like to know what does everybody else think. So it's a great way to find people who are interested in the same things that you're interested in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, absolutely. So what's next in creating a power profile on Goodreads? Well, once you've, you've done the basics, then you can really have fun with the site because there's a lot of room to do a lot of things on Goodreads. Um, one of the benefits of becoming a Goodreads author, for instance, is you can also do giveaways on the site. And that'd be a really fantastic way to the book pre-publication as well as after it's been out for a little while. You can help build buzz for your book. It's, it's often best to 
to do a giveaway as a launch for your book. And then as you build more of a following, you can do a follow-up and at that point get even more exposure. So you would recommend then doing a pre-publication um, giveaway and then a post-publication giveaway? Yeah, I think it's a great way to really kind of keep that book in front of people because it's interesting that as you grow your following, more and more people become aware of you and you time out, you will be able to get sort of a wider net of people. And that's one of the really nice things about Goodreads is that the circle just keeps getting larger and larger. Because if during that first giveaway, there are people who enter the contest and added the book to their shelves, which is seen by their friends, and it just creates a greater awareness. Okay. And would you do you have a number of, what's the number of books that you typically recommend that people... Um, that people give away because I'm known authors to do 50 and I think 50 is a little bit daunting. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I think 50 is pretty high. Although if an author is willing to mail out those 50 books, then that's certainly not a problem for mo most authors. I think it might be more realistic to mail out 10 and authors should consider whether they're interested in going worldwide with the giveaway. Yes, there may be slightly higher mailing costs, but if you have a worldwide giveaway, then you are obviously seen by a much larger pool of potential fans and readers. Okay. But I do agree that I think it's a, it is a really good idea to do international, right? I, it certainly can be, but again, it is a matter of choice. And some people just feel more comfortable, especially in the beginning, sticking to something that feel is a little more manageable. So 10 books, U.S. only. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Perfect. And then one little trick that I want to share with folks as far as the, the giveaways go is that um, your number one goal on Goodreads should be to get reviews. I think reviews on Goodreads is, is extremely important. Um, and the free books don't always translate into reviews. Sometimes you have to kind of prod them a little bit. So one of the things that I would suggest is that um, once I do once I do a giveaway, even just for my books, I will go in and I will pull that Excel spreadsheet. So Goodreads sends you an Excel spreadsheet and says, okay, here are your 10 winners or your 50 winners or whatever. And then I'll go in and I will send messages to each of the people who want a book and just say, hey, your book's on the way. I'd really love your thoughts about this book. Um, you know, please let me know. And then maybe in a couple of weeks, I'll do a follow up. Just want to make sure that you've got a copy of the book, because we all know that sometimes, you know, books get lost in the mail, yada, yada. So you don't want a book just not showing up accidentally. And for the, for the winner to go, wow, you know, this author really didn't, you know, didn't kind of complete the circle on the giveaways. I mean, Paula, is there anything wrong with doing that? No, not at all. I mean, I, I think that authors should take advantage of an opportunity to have a personal touch. And I've had a lot of readers tell me they enjoy getting a personal reason no, when they've won a contest. They enjoy getting a little heads up that they won the contest and the book should be mailed within a certain amount of time. And I think that also that opens the door for an author to check back in a couple of months and just want to make sure you got your copy of the book, let me know if there are any problems, and I look forward to your feedback. So it's a roundabout way of asking for a review, and yet it also just sort of keeps you front and center of the reader with the focus on, I hope you've got your copy. Since, you know, sometimes there can be problems with the mail, so there's certainly no harm in following up. Okay. Okay, that's great. So anything else about the, about the profile before we move into, um, before we move into the group stuff? No, I think really with the profile, just look at the various categories that are available to you and buy it as much as you possibly can. If you don't have, it's not a problem, but if you do have it, you do, uh, for example, you can also add your Twitter username. So if you are active on Twitter, be sure to take advantage of that as well. Okay. All right. That's perfect. Um, all right. So we're going to bookmark it here. And then when we come back, we're going to talk about... Um, Goodreads groups, and then we'll also talk about some of the power stuff that you can do for um, just to kind of, you know, be d just sort of to remain active on Goodreads. So thank you so much for taking the time to teach us, and we'll be back shortly.